On Thursday, June 13, 2013, the Supreme Court issued a patent decision that uh, has profound implications for the U.S. biotechnology industry. In Association for Molecular Pathology versus Myriad Genetics, a unanimous Supreme Court held that isolated DNA was not eligible for patents, while in the same opinion, the Supreme Court ruled that cDNA was eligible for patents, provided that um, the other requirements of patentability, namely that the uh, invention was new, non-obvious, and useful, were satisfied. So at issue in the case were several patents held by Myriad Genetics. Myriad discovered the precise location and sequence of the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. A mutation in those genes indicates that a woman is at a uh, heightened predisposition to uh, breast and ovarian cancer. Myriad had obtained uh, a number of patents at uh, on that discovery. Some of the patents dealt with isolated DNA, and so that's DNA that had been extracted from the body using well-known techniques. Myriad also obtained patents on cDNA, or complementary DNA, which is uh, lab-generated DNA. Um, the patents gave Myriad the ability to exclude others from isolating the BRCA1 and 2 genes. The Federal Circuit Court of Appeals, the lower court that hears all patent appeals, had affirmed the patentability of both the isolated DNA and the cDNA. And so Justice Thomas, writing for a unanimous Supreme Court, held that the isolated DNA claims were not patent eligible. Justice Thomas first explained that the patent laws provided a delicate balance between, on the one hand, encouraging innovation, and on the other hand, uh, making sure that the basic building blocks and tools of scientists um, were not um, held by a few that would impede innovation. And to kind of strike this balance, the court used the doctrine of patent eligibility, and Justice Thomas noted that the Supreme Court has held that there are three things that are excluded from patent eligibility historically. Laws of nature, abstract ideas, and natural phenomenon. And here, when Justice Thomas looked at the isolated DNA, he said that that was, uh, he for the court, said that that was uh, the same as what existed in nature. And the fact that Myriad Genetics had spent a lot of money and a lot of time developing it or finding uh, the genes did not uh, render the genes patent eligible. Um, Justice Thomas also said that the um, patent office's long-standing practice of allowing patents on isolated DNA um, did not save the day, and that therefore um, the claims that Myriad had on isolated DNA were not patent eligible. In a relatively brief uh, section on the cDNA claims, Justice Thomas said that those were eligible for patents because those were created by a lab technician and those were not uh, existing in nature. Um, so while the precise implications of the decision are yet, not yet apparent, one thing is apparent. Several companies in the several days after the opinion uh, was announced have already publicly stated that they will offer testing um, for patients uh, on the BRCA1 and 2 genes. And they will do so at a price that's lower than what Myriad Genetics had previously offered. 